welcome this morning to our Sunday worship, which uniquely is Heritage Sunday and Pentecost today. Lord God, be with us as we worship and praise your name. Be with us while we gather as a community of God, asking the Holy Spirit to descend on us as he did in that upper room of our ancestors so many years ago. The Holy Spirit sustains us each and every day in the name of Jesus. Please stand if you are able to sing our hymn this morning. Be seated. Gracious God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit here with us as our protection and provision. Thank you that we have the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, mindful of him, and remember to draw on his power. Please help us to be obviously different than everyone we encounter and to reflect you in our lives so that people will know the Lord is with us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please join me in saying the prayer of confession. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the power of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please take a moment to silently confess our sins. Thank you for the assurance of forgiveness through Jesus Christ as we resolve to do better as a family of God with you and with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. You look good in red. Today is Pentecost Sunday and Heritage Sunday. We recognize 21 individuals who have been members of this church for 50 years or more. Our Heritage members are examples of selfless service to God. They have served the Lord faithfully and sacrificially and are still actively blessing our church family and our greater community. As I looked at the list of heritage members, 
the list is full of elders and deacons and those who are still actively building Christ's church and blessing our greater community. For example, just this Thursday, our sewing group was sewing pieces for those who are suffering in our community with Alzheimer's. To our heritage members, you have been a blessing and you are a blessing to Christ's church here and to our greater community. May God continue to bless each one of you and use you for God's glory. We thank you for being our examples and pioneers in the faith. At this time, I would ask that you please stand as I call your name. Elaine Brown. Elizabeth Bernhard. Morag Vance. Donald Brown. Donna Lou Anderson. Ann Susack. John McEwen. Beverly Chimaluski, Betty McEwen, Henry Greer, Marianne, Mary, Marian Greer, John Lindsay, Janet Evan Neal, George Bell, Denise Ketchell, Jacqueline Dugali, Nancy Holler Murray, John McDowell the Third, Sarah Jean Harbinson, Janet McDowell Finch, Susan Bernhard Donegan. As a sign of our gratitude, will you join me in giving a clap offering of praise to God? And let us pray for those who are standing. We thank you for the lives, the love, the truth, and the service that you have poured out, O oh Lord, through your heritage members. Please continue to bless them in Christ's name. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning are found in Exodus 19. 16 through 19 in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Listen now for the word of the Lord. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. And the whole mountain trembled violently. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him. Acts 2, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven 
and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. For Melissa and I, last week was a week of waiting. After over a year of not seeing our beloved sister and what I have learned, our super athletic nephew, we had to wait one more week. I was so excited that I even made the guest bed. I don't even make my own bed. Finally, Friday came, and there was nothing left for us to do but sit and wait. The day of Pentecost began with waiting. At this point in the story, Jesus had been resurrected and crucified from the dead. And for 40 days, he gave convincing proofs that he was alive. During this time, Jesus commanded his apostles, you guessed it, to wait. In Acts chapter 1, he tells them, he commands them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the Holy Spirit. Then... Before Jesus ascended into heaven, on the 40th day, his last words to his apostles were, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So I have this great mission for you, but now, wait. And for 10 days, the church waited. The church waited for God's power. The church waited for God's spirit. The church waited to become Christ's witnesses. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, the day of Pentecost came. The word Pentecost may not mean much to people outside of our church family. But if you asked a first century Jewish teenager what Pentecost meant, that teenager would tell you the day of Pentecost is the 50th day after Passover. Duh! It's the festival of first fruits. It's the day that the farmers 
gather in the first fruits of their harvest to offer to God. Pentecost was also the day to commemorate what God had done the 50th day after the Passover. And of course, the Passover happened in the land of Egypt when the Hebrew people were in bondage, in slavery. And 50 days after the Passover, as we read in Exodus 19, God Almighty descended upon Mount Sinai. And, and because we just read it, you, it's fresh in your mind. It was quite a scene. It was the type of scene that I don't even know that we can imagine in this day and age. Imagine the sight and the sounds. The sound of rolling thunder that reverberates in your bones. You ever hear, ever feel your own bones shaking? That's how they felt when God descended upon Mount Sinai. The sight of smoke, lightning, and fire. I've never been close to a volcano, but I imagine that this is as close as the Israelites had come to the eruption of a volcano. The sky was a light above them. Below them, the ground was quaking, and I believe that this scene gives new meaning to the phrase, a phrase that I have been calling since I was a boy raised in a Presbyterian church. They were on that day the original, frozen, chosen. They were scared to death. God has come. What will God do? And they watched as their brave leader Moses ascended to the top of Mount Sinai. And after meeting with God, Moses descends, as you know, with the word of God written on tablets. He was carrying God's commandments. In Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, the believers were commemorating this event, how God descended in wind and fire to deliver God's word to God's people. That's the context as they're sitting and waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And what happens next, people of faith would not call a coincidence with much certainty and conviction. We would call it God's providence. Verse 2, suddenly... The sound of the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. And we thank, I thank God today because we do have a breeze. But we don't have a violent wind. Think about it this way. They were sitting in the house waiting and all of a sudden, they were startled by the sound of a roaring jet engine. The house was filled with a violent sound. All the people who showed up for church that day were startled. And all the people in the surrounding streets, all the Jews who came to celebrate the Passover were startled and couldn't help but descend upon the house where the noise was violent. The, Luke continues in Acts, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. I'm going to say that again for you. Tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. It seemed to be tongues of fire, like the tongue in your mouth, but it wasn't a literal tongue. It only seemed to be a tongue, and the tongues were on fire above them. But I have to tell you, church, their hair was not on fire. It just seemed to be fire, but it wasn't fire. Luke is trying to explain a supernatural movement of God within the constraints of human language. And today as we commemorate Pentecost, we commemorate how in the sound of wind and the sight of tongues of fire, God, in the person of the Holy Spirit, 
did not descend simply on a mountain, but descended upon people. The Holy Spirit came to rest on church people, people like you and I. The Holy Spirit filled Christ's people, people like you and I. The God of the universe who descended upon Mount Sinai is the God whose presence and power descends upon this house, First Presbyterian Church of Fairfield, and on people like you and I. We don't commemorate how Moses ascended to the mountain and brought down God's word. We commemorate how Jesus ascended into heaven and sent down God's spirit to fill people like you and I. Why would God do such a thing on that Pentecost Sunday? And why would God do such a thing on this Pentecost Sunday. We are filled by the Spirit to be emptied of the Word. The Spirit is poured out upon you so that the Word can be poured out through you. The Spirit empowers us to speak the Word of God. I know you're afraid about witnessing and sharing the Word of God, and that's why we need the Holy Spirit to empower us to share the Word of God with the world. Verse 4 tells us that all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. I'll repeat that. I, I'm going to repeat it for me because I missed it for about 10 years. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. For a long time, I thought that it was only the 12 apostles who were filled with the Holy Spirit. I thought it was the 12 apostles who had the tongues of fire. I mistakenly thought that the rest of the members, the heritage members, the children, the teenagers were left out. Acts 2 says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, every single Christian. All of them were filled with the power of God. The Holy Spirit is for every person in the pew today. The filling of the Holy Spirit is for you today. On Pentecost, God fills every Christian with the Holy Spirit. God gives every Christian a tongue of fire. Every Christian gets the power of the Holy Spirit. And there's a specific reason that God does it this way for every Christian. When the Holy, Jesus said this, remember, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power and will be my witnesses. Not might be, you will be my witnesses. It's a promise, you will be my witnesses. God fills you with the Holy Spirit to make you witnesses. The moment God fills you with the Holy Spirit, you become a witness. I had this realization this morning, actually. Something clicked in my mind from a conversation I had with my sister. She couldn't believe that our daughter, who is two and a half years old, did not know, so, sorry, had never tasted ice cream. And the reason I didn't, I'm going to confess this, the reason that I didn't introduce her to ice cream is because ice cream is for... Dad, dad. <laughs> There's no need to share ice cream. Do you know that little Violet Sarah has a song memorized about ice cream? When we read books to her and there's a picture of an ice cream cone, she says ice cream. Yet, she has never tasted the goodness of ice cream. The filling of the Holy Spirit takes you from knowing about God to experiencing the goodness of God. It, they're two different things. The Spirit takes you from knowing the Bible verses about God's love to experiencing God's love for yourself. The Spirit takes God's love from concept to reality. You can know all about the Bible on an intellectual level. You can even go to seminary. 
When you experience the Holy Spirit, God's word is not just up here in your mind. Something that you can regurgitate and, and, and show off in, d during your Bible study group. God's word renews your mind. God's word changes the way that you think and interact with the world. Your sense of morality might be biblically based. When you experience the Holy Spirit, you're so deeply convicted that you stop making excuses and compromises and you start chasing after the freedom of Jesus Christ. When you experience the Holy Spirit for yourself, the God of Mount Sinai becomes the God of your heart. When you experience the Holy Spirit for yourself, God makes you a witness. You personally witness the power, the love, the peace, the conviction, the comfort, the boldness of God. God is no longer an abstraction. God becomes your reality. And when you experience the Holy Spirit for yourself, you can't help but share Jesus with others. Jesus is the Word of God. Spirit in, Jesus out. Filled with the Holy Spirit, emptied of the Word of Jesus. God fills all of them with the Holy Spirit to empower all of them to share Jesus with the world. They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They didn't have to go to Spanish class to learn Spanish. Isn't that great? In this context, what, what Luke is describing for us is they began to speak in foreign languages that they never had to study. If you're thinking about skipping out on your study session because you have the Holy Spirit, don't test the Lord. God gave them the gift of foreign language because as you all know, God knows every language. And they were staying in Jerusalem with God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. So Pentecost brings in people from every nation and tongue. The house they were staying in, the upper room. They were surrounded by people in homes and on bustling city streets who were from every nation under the earth. And so the crowd descends upon the church through the sound of the violent wind. And they hear 120 Christians speaking their native languages. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these people speaking Galileans? Aren't all these people the people who don't go to college and never leave their hometown? That's what they're saying. And they ask, what does this mean? In verse 11, they say, we hear them proclaiming the wonders of God in our own languages. And I want you to understand that when they say the phrase wonders of God, that phrase means works of salvation. And so in other languages, languages they never learned, they're proclaiming Jesus has come. Jesus has been crucified for our sins, and Jesus is risen from the dead for the salvation of all people. They proclaim the word of God, Jesus, filled by the Spirit, emptied of the word. And I want to close with this example. One of my favorite pastors is Francis Chan. One time he was flying to a youth conference to witness to tens of thousands of youth. On the plane, he was sitting next to a woman. Francis felt in his spirit that the Holy Spirit was telling him to share his faith with the woman on the plane. Francis was tired. He didn't want to make things weird. It was a cross-country flight. And so Francis ignored the Spirit, quenched the Spirit. For three days he shared the Word at the conference. For three days he was bothered that he shared the Word in the church, but refused to witness to the woman on the plane. After the conference, Francis boarded the plane to fly home. The same woman was sitting next, sitting next to him on that plane. This time... Francis witnessed, he shared the good word. Pentecost began with the church, sitting, waiting, and commemorating how God had descended upon a mountain. Today, you were sitting, waiting, and commemorating 
how the Holy Spirit descended upon people like you and I. God doesn't ask us to simply sit, wait, and commemorate. God empowers us to be his witnesses to the world. Who is God putting in front of you? Who has God been putting in front of you, not simply for this year, but for decades and decades and decades? The waiting is over. The Holy Spirit has come to make us witnesses. As we ask the Spirit to fill us, may we all be emptied of his word, the word of Jesus, for his glory on this day and forevermore. And all God's people say together, Amen. Amen. As a sign of our oneness in faith, I'm going to ask that you stand as we say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you pray with me? On this day of Pentecost, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We praise you for your power and your presence. As we see in the book of Acts, you are faithful to fill your people with your spirit. We ask that you would fill us with your spirit, not for our glory, not for our praise, but for your glory and for your praise. We come to you as a people who are timid, Lord, we've learned to be quiet when we ought to speak up. Lord, we've learned to protect our reputation rather than to make you famous. We ask that as famous as Jesus is in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus would become Lord and Master here on earth, praised and worshiped. Fill us with your spirit. Empty us of your word. We give a special thanks on this day for your heritage members through whom you have filled with your spirit to empty of your word. We thank you for the ministry, the works of compassion and mercy, the way that they have blessed your people, Lord, for over a half century, for the stability, the sacrifice, and the love that has been poured out. Through them, we give you praise. On this day, we particularly lift up those in need of a touch of your Holy Spirit. We pray for the family of Stephen Hopkins, Janelle DiLorenzo's uncle who passed away this morning. We lift up the families of, and friends of Kid Haig and Connie Holler, those who are grieving the family of Pam Huth. We pray for Elizabeth Bonafini's uncle Bob for comfort and healing. We lift up Matt Marshall and his family, David Hill for successful and speedy recovery, Mike Ailes for recovery and good prognosis, Tom May for recovery for a fall and broken hip, Maria Lindsay for successful treatments. We ask this in Jesus' name. And Lord, now we pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Will you remain standing for our closing hymn? As we go from this place, filled by the Spirit, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the power of the Holy Spirit be ours on this day to share with the world for the glory of God. And all God's saints say together, Amen.